so good morning to all of you today we are going to see the Young modulus modulus of rigidity and what is mean by poison ratio okay from the mechanics of solid so one by one we are going to see what are the, these technical terms terms so first we are going to see what is this modulus or its uh, other name for the Young modulus is modulus of elasticity the ratio between tensile stress and compressive stress to the corresponding stress is constant this ratio is known as Young's modulus or the modulus of elasticity and it is denoted by E. So you can see here E is equal to tensile stress or compressive stress divided by tensile strength or the compressive strength. Already we have seen what is meant by tensile stress, what is meant by compressive stress in a previous lecture, what is meant by tensile strength and what is meant by compressive strength also we have seen in last lecture so if you are going to represent the Young's modulus or modulus of elasticity as capital E we can write like this E is equal to stress sigma divided by small e we, we are going to use for the strain okay so this is simple definition egg modulus or modulus of elasticity the ratio of okay stress to the strain simple thing okay Next, after the Young's modulus or modulus of elasticity, next is modulus of rigidity or shear modulus. What is mean by now modulus of rigidity and shear modulus? The ratio of shear stress to the corresponding shear strain within the elastic limit is known as a modulus of rigidity or the shear modulus. See, important thing is this elastic limit, the ratio of shear stress to the shear strain within the elastic limit is known as a modulus of rigidity we have already seen what is mean by elasticity and what is mean by elastic limit also okay so the definition of modulus of rigidity is the ratio of shear stress to the shear strain okay so and this modulus of rigidity is denoted by c or sometimes it is denoted by capital g or is denoted by the capital n I can write here that is capital C or capital G or capital N is equal to shear stress divided by shear strain. Okay, and we can represent like this the shear strain and the shear stress. And next important thing is the factor of safety. What is meant by factor of safety? When you are going to consider the design of concrete structure, okay, or any design which, uh, steel structure, in that case we have to consider the factor of safety. Okay, safety is our prime thing in the design okay so uh, we have to consider the factor of safety what is meant by this factor of safety now okay the factor of safety is a ratio of ultimate stress divided by permissible stress okay so this is simple definition of factor of safety that ultimate stress divided by permissible stress ultimate means if you are going to take the example of uh, my uh, tar steel in that case if uh, stress in the tall steel ultimate stress is suppose 500 newton per mm square in that case 500 divided by permissible if suppose that is 400 the ratio you have to take 500 by 400 and that is factor of safety okay for your information in concrete structure always we are going to use load factor 1.5 for calculating any design or doing any design okay next after this factor of safety next is Constitutive relationship between stress and strain. Up till now we have seen what is mean by strain, what is mean by stress. We have seen the various technical terms, okay, uh, of the in mechanics of solids. Now we are going to see if you if you know the what is mean by stress and strain. The definition of stress already you people know. The force per unit area is called as a stress, and the ratio of change in length to original length is called as a strain okay what is relationship between these two that we have to see but that relationship is depend upon which type of dimensions we are going to use so for one dimensional stress system where we are going to consider only one dimension okay we are going to consider only unidirectional stresses that is that is for normal stress in one direction only in that case what is relationship between stress and strain so here the stress and strain relationship is Sim, uh, similar that already we have seen the formula that x modulus the stre stress e stress divided by strain okay is the relationship simple in a one dimensional stress system if you are going to consider the two dimensional stress system okay two dimensional st stress system means here we are going to consider the two dimensions of the body 
earlier we have considered only one direction effect of stress only in one direction here we have to consider the effect of effect on body by considering the two directions so for that initially to, uh, to study this or to understand this we have to know, uh, know certain certain technical terms in this also and that is longitudinal strength okay we have to we have to know and then we have to know what is mean by lateral strength longitudinal strength and lateral strength in world it in it is, this initial word is also cl it clearly uh, we, we are going to understand that longitudinal means what always in uh, engineering drawing we are going to say that uh, take longitudinal section of the uh, body or material in that case longitudinal means along the length if you are going to measure any body along the length that dimension is called as a longitudinal dimension so here we have to calculate the longitudinal strain what is the longitudinal strain okay and second is a lateral strain lateral strain means when you are going to take or measure or cut the section perpendicular to the length or the direction that is called as a lateral so here that two things you have to keep in mind what is meant by longitudinal strain what is meant by lateral strain so what is longitudinal strain now so when body is subjected to an axial tensile load there is an increase in length of body here you can see this when you are going to stretch the body okay here suppose this uh, red color is original body and if you are going to stress this body what happen when body is subjected to axial tensile load there is an increase in the length of the body so here you can see the old body is red one and the extended body is blue one okay so the body length is increase so but at the same time there is a decrease in other dimension of the body at right angles to the line of action of the applied load here you can see this is original body this side at p direction direction of load side along the length the body dimension is going to increase but same way if you are going to consider the depth of original body that depth is going to reduce okay decrease so here you you can see this the right angle the line of action the applied load the decreases thus the body is having axial deformation and also deformation at right angles to the line of action of the applied load that is lateral deformation okay already i have told you lateral means what this is longitudinal along the length and lateral means perpendicular to the length so lateral deformation is there so original shape of body is, is red color okay and after stretching the body after they applying the tensile forces to the body body is elongated in a uh, longitudinal direction and that decreases in the lateral direction so that is called as a lateral decrease here here lateral deformation okay so here you can see the ratio of this axial deformation to the original length of the body is known as the longitudinal strain or the linear strain simple definition you have first or you people have understood already what is the longitudinal strain along the length lateral strain means perpendicular to the length and the ratio of axial deformation to the original length of body is known as a longitudinal strain so this is axial deformation along the length deformation that is called as a so that axial deformation to the original length of body is known as a longitudinal strain and the longitudinal strain is also defined as the deformation of body per unit length in the direction of the applied load okay so direction in the applied load this body dimension is going body is going to deform okay and that's why we are going to consider the definition of this uh, longitudinal strain we can uh, define like this the deformation of the body per unit length in the direction of the applied load okay so here you can see this this is original length and extended length change in length this is delta n so this is change in length this length, length is increase delta n okay this is total length plus delta n is the increase length due to the tensile load applied okay here you can see let l is the length of body p is the tensile forces and the delta n increase in the length of the body in the direction of p okay and then we we can write here longitudinal strain is equal to change in length or axial deformation along the length divided by original length of the body okay so this is about the lateral longitudinal strain
same way we are going to see now lateral strain what is lateral strain the strain at right angle to the direction of applied load is known as the lateral strain already i have explained you this is longitudinal strain okay and right angle to this length the strain which you are going to consider that is called as a lateral strain the strain at right angle to the direction of applied load is known as a lateral strain let now we take the example let the rectangular bar of length l breadth b and depth d whatever this bar we have considered if you are going to cut cross section if you are going to see the cross section of that bar you can we can see we can see here breadth and depth of that bar bar having the uh, total length l and depth d is subjected to axial tensile load p as shown in figure so here you can see okay the length of bar will increase while the breadth and depth will decrease already i have told you length is going to decrease de increase and breadth and depth is going to decrease so here in plan you can see this if b and d is the original cross section of the bar when the, the length is going to decrease if you can see this dotted line in plan or in cross section you can see this so there is a decrease in depth and width of the bar so i can write here total depth d minus change in depth that is decrease in depth and here also b b minus decrease in total depth uh, in total width okay so here i can say that the length of bar will increase while the breadth and depth will be decrease here we, i can i can uh, say here delta l is a increase in the length now we have we use here delta l is increase in length delta b decrease in breadth okay already i have told you and delta d is a decrease in a depth and the longitudinal strain definition delta l divided by delta l uh, sorry l and the lateral strain here delta b divided by l or delta d divided by l so this is about the longitudinal strain and the lateral strain now next thing after knowing the systems one dimensional system okay two dimensional system in two dimensional system of the strain uh, we have seen that what is longitudinal strain and what is lateral strain now next important thing we are going to see that poisson's ratio what is poisson's ratio definition the ratio of lateral strain to the longitudinal strain is a constant okay the ratio of lateral strain to the longitudinal strain is constant and that constant is called as a poisson's ratio okay so for the given material when material is stretched within the elastic limit this ratio is called as a poisson's ratio and it is generally denoted by mu okay so lateral strain here mu into longitudinal strain if by using this formula we can write here so lateral strain is equal to mu into longitudinal strain so as a lateral strain is opposite in the sign to the longitudinal strain already we have seen when longitudinal strain the strain is increased in other direction lateral strain is going to decrease so the nature of sign will be opposite so that's why i can write here lateral strain is equal to minus mu into longitudinal strain so this is about the definition of poisson's ratio that lateral strain divided by longitudinal strain okay so this is about the poisson's ratio the next lecture we are going to see the three dimension system or in uh, sorry two dimension system and how we are going to establish the relationship between the stress and strain okay so today we are going to stop here